Hey everyone, it's Vendillion88 here, and this is not Kingdom Hearts. This is another game I've been wanting to let's play for a long time and decided to apparently do it now that I figured out how, how to work Audacity and OBS together. But this is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the original. I also want, I also want to do another let's play of Warcraft like I did before, but better this time with you know actually talking and stuff. And would prefer to do that game with friends, but but I my friends I play with don't have the game, and the two the people that do play the game don't want to talk on Skype and stuff or Discord or whatever. So I can do that solo too. But we'll get to that bridge. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Anyways, new game. Let's do this. Episode one, the first turnabout. And that's loud. Gasp, gasp. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. My voice hurts. I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. <coughs> August 3rd. For this record, the number two. Got. Yeah. <coughs> oh, God. Of course, my voice is going cracking like crazy because I'm sick. But wanna. <coughs> oh, get this done. Putting recordings off for too long. Boy, am I nervous. Hey, bats. No one would believe it. I was just turning it if I didn't carry this. Denise autopsy report. Time of death, July 31st. Between 4 and 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Mia Faye. Chief Attorney at Fair Company, my boss, and a very good defense attorney. Very butts. <laughs> the defendant in this case, like a little guy who was my f friend back in grade school. Cindy Stone, the victim in this case, uh, uh, Miles, she lives in the apartment by herself. And that's all of it. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hey, hiya, chief. Whew. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. I'm impressed that my my female voice still sucks. Dad. It'd be great to have a, a real female do this part, but whatever. <sighs> Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because oh, since it's me again. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Yes, I did. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. Oh, that was, oh I did. That was, that was his voice still. Wow. It's over. My life, everything. It's all over. Hmm? Isn't that your client? Screwing over there? Uh, yeah. 
That's him. Death. Despair. Oh! I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Oh, it sounds like it sounds like he wants to die. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah. Sigh. Nick. Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude. I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished? Can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. I took my baby away. Hmm. Thinking now. Blue is thinking. Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you! They say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. Something, something. Youngest one and curls. I feel always for that part. <laughs> Here's the story of a man named Brady who's bringing up three very boys. Four men living all together, yet they were all alone. And uh, more songs. My first case is a fairly simple one. <coughs> a young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school has a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. Sweating sweat, 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 sweat. In 23 years I've known him, it, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, he's a good guy at heart. That I owe him one. This is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. <coughs> August 3rd. 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number two. Coming all the time. It's going to be fun. Look, this is a short case. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. I can't do my old man voice very well. Maybe Mario 2 can edit in a better old man voice. Probably not. But anyways, let's go. Oh, the hit this guy. The prosecution is ready, your honor. I'm geeky McGeek geek voice, I guess. The, um, defense is ready, your honor. Um, oh. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, um, Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yeah, yes, yes, your honor, I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thanks, thanks, thank you, your honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have, I think we should have a test to show your readiness. Yeah, yes, yes, your honor. No, hands shaking, eyesight. Waiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, please take the aim to finish this case. I have to be fast forward. Larry Butts. Isn't it? Well, that's it. Larry Butts, your honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, who's the victim's name? What's the victim's name? I guess, uh, who is what's now? Ooh, I, I know this one. Good life where the kids are for the so many times. It's, wait, uh, uh-oh. 
No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a tall blank here. Phoenix! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure, absolutely sure you're up to this? Saving not the victim's name? But you just looked at like five seconds ago, five minutes ago. Oh, the victim, of course. Not the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, this is name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it, for, do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Me and my boobs. Let's see your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Sydney Stone. Oh, my name is Sydney Stone. <coughs> Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we should proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, yes, your honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, victims were struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The, m the murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue edited the court record. Right! You should have paid attention to ev any evidence added during the trial. The evidence is only is the only animation you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, prosecution may call its first witness. The prosec- The prosecution- Prosecution calls defense Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief? <coughs> I'm Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention, you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he isn't, let's just hope he isn't saying anything. Unfortunate. Uh oh. Uh oh. Larry's excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hi, what's up, buddy? We are both together. We are rope. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? Da da da. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or, or seeing me. Ever? Was it to you, anyways? Mr. Butts, what you described is generally what we mean by. Dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. <coughs> <coughs> cough, cough, cough. Oh, sorry about that. I had to pop some Dayquil. Uh, uh, that part out, probably, but whatever. Here, here we go. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I'll be a word of it! Breath was it is, but I gotta give it right now! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris on the day before she died. Passport, out of the court record. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude? No way! No way, dude! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. 
it appears she had several sugar daddies. Daughters? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can closely see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him I want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry's a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I Let me see what happens? Stop it from answering. My client has no had no idea that we can missing other men. The question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, rinse. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? <coughs> that cheating sea dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. And I, I, we after life, let me get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next, next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Whoop. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, m m maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? I messed around with sleep. I know I'll send him a single. Tell the truth! Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Or, well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She's at home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, Stephanie is lying. Lying? Prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who, who, who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. Saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Order a turkey sandwich. That's what Nico B says. The, the turkey is turkey bagel sandwich is the catchphrase of Nico B's thing, but probably that can be this one. So I'll forget about it. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its, its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. When they, had the, when they had the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Swartz to the stand. Oh, look! Mr. Swartz, you sell newspapers. Swartz, you sell newspapers, Chris. Is this correct? Hey, look! It's the real killer! Right there! We already know about, because. Surprise! This game reveals the killers beforehand. Oh yes, newspapers. Yes. Uh, this probably bad voice too, but uh, I only have. I, I can only do a few, a few voices. <clears throat> Mr. Swartz, you, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw the day of the murder. Where's that money? Where's the count? I was going door to door. So you get some. I saw the man fleeing the apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I went to the side of the apartment. And I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead. 
fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought they called the police immediately. However, the photo the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Near my parking found the public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Ooh. The man who ran away without a doubt was the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. <coughs> Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone of the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't the phones supposed to work during a blackout? Ye yes, Your Honor. However, some, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Swatz used was one of those. Your Honor, I read the blackout for you for your pursuit. I got record as the court record. Now, Mr. Wright, court record. Oh, I think it's rather heavy. Apparently, right from Paris on, on July 30th, they put the murder. Electricity to Mr. Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. No, Mr. Wright. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. Cross examination, Your Honor. <coughs> <coughs> All right, right, this is it. The real deal. Um, uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Can we do? Why are you supposed to lie to the testimony that the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? If your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Duh, you idiot! Or is, that, or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You have the keys. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court records and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the context evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out the contradiction in the testimony. <coughs> I mean, testimony. Mm hmm. I saw, saw the man fleeing the apartment. Be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Damn strange, I locked inside the apartment. I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I called in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. Never the phone in the apartment wasn't working. In my park and on a public phone. Remember the time exactly? It was 1 p.m. Uh oh. And that wasn't you, idiot. Boom! Objection! Objection, motherfucker! If the white 1 p.m., are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Autopsy notes the time of death was sometime after 4 p.m. There's nobody to, er, uh, no, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Uh, oh, that, that, oh, uh, er. This is trivial, the witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Just what? Why are you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, uh, well, I. Gee, that's really a good question. 
Great job, Bright! Way to push him up well, on the spot! That's all you have to do! Bring out contradictions! Lies always beget more lies! You do one, and their whole story falls apart! Wait, I I remember now. Would you care to give the testimony again? Time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the, I heard the time. Right, turn time. The voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. <laughs> oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim was watching a television off a tape program. That's why I thought that it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. Pfft. Hmm, I see you heard the voice, or mostly you heard your voice during the time of the tape program. But you're right, you may cross examine the witness. Right! You know what to do! Stop staring at my chest for one! Let's hear the witness. Stop, stop staring at me. I've got this one. And no, I'm not going to. Time of discovery. See, I found the. I, I, I heard the time. There's a voice saying the time. It was probably clear from the television. Percent. Hold it right there, motherfucker. You're wrong again. Prosecution had said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <coughs> you could have heard television or a video. Gah. I will irk. The fence has a point. Do you have a question for this, Mr. Swartz? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, oh, wait, wait, I remember now. Mr. Swartz. I prefer to hear the an accurate testimony from the very beginning. Because the corrections are harming your credibility. But, and you seem rather distraught. Uh, my fault, my fault, Your Honor. It, er, it must have been sacrificing the body. Very well, Mr. Swartz. Let's hear your testimony. Once more, once more, please. Stop perjuring yourself! The time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it! There's a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. So the clock, I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Oh boy, this... Eight at a time, I saw it. So the clock in the apartment wasn't there. Now, for the contradiction. Strikes me as a very specific mistake. Yes, I can see how you would be a little doubtful. Really sorry, I only remember that table clock. A table clock? Wasn't there? How much weapon? I used it to. Their weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections, you your evidence, this is who you think you are? An attorney or something? A lawyer? Just answer the question, Joe Swats. 
Hey, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? The witness states this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You're still did it and this is the time. Out loud. <coughs> it doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a, this is a clock. Do you have problems with the testimony now? Yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. Yet the witness is testified he, he never entered the apartment. Clearly, it's contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew, the witness knew it was a clock because he... went to the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Uh, yeah? Prove it. Prove it I went in there. That's better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her of the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That's the sound you heard! <coughs> Order in the court. Order my turkey sandwich! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Swats. The sound must have left the prime impression on you. Understandable since the murder weapon spilled just as you, as you hit the victim. That voice was burnt into your mind. That's why you're so certain about the time. What, what, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Faceless? Just look at the witness's face! No, girl? Will the witness look at elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, th that day, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, saw, no! Ah, I'm bold! <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, I hate you! Shouldn't I tell you? I saw him. I tell you? I saw him! He, he, he killed her, and he, and he said, Burn! Burn! Give him, give him death! Order in the court. Order, I say. Oh. Yeah, Honor. A, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Yeah, Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is right on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Swat heard was definitely this clock. A fact was you, sim was you simply... Try sounding the clock. Sound the clock, now here in this courtroom. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, this is the thinker after all. So, uh, we hit the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time is it now? <coughs> it's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Heard and the time of death. So, Mr. Swats. Try to talk your way out of this one! Huh? Huh, Mr. Baldy? Baldy? Baldy Bald? Ha! 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 He forgot one thing. Uh oh. What's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. Nothing, I say. Nothing! How do you know it was three, hour, three hours slow on the day of the murder? You can't prove that. You, you don't have 
Uh, he's right. Can I fucking approve that? Damn it! I was so close! So close to ending this case! End video! Mr. Wright, it seems like you've lacked the critical evidence to support your claim. Oh boy. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. This is the question I of Mr. Frank Swatch. I come all the way down here to testify and look at what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal? You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing that I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Swat! Mia? I mean, Chief? Isn't that bright? Don't throw this one away! Not like this! Think! But, Chief, it's over! Over! I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste the time dying the effects. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right, right. You think your reason at the clock clock would be three hours slow? Yes, yes I can. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. There's some evidence somewhere I can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder? Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court records that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Doubt. Huh, tough words. Let's see here. Pull this one off. There's evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The passport. The victim had just returned home from the day abroad before the murder. As we all know, time just in Paris here is 9 hours. It's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast, you motherfucker! The victim had reset the clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard the struck error dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you? Mr. Swat, or should I say, Mr. Did it? Ooh, pun, pun, pun. Duh. He dead. Order, order, I say. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, er, he was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well. <coughs> You're right. Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. That'll never, that'll, that'll never happen again. Never, ever, ever. I find this that's from two corporates at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only formality, but it's quite fine to defend it, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty! Let the confetti fly! For some reason! And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out Frank Swatz was a common burglar. He posted the newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house that day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim was at home. After he left, Mr. Swatz let himself in to do his dirty work. 
While he was searching your place, the victim returned. So we just want to grab the nearest blown object he could find? Blood. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Divinity Lobby, number two. Phew, I still can't believe it. we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. Not all of you. Not at all, not at all. You forgot your own battles in there. Well, since I've seen a trial in on such a satisfying note. <coughs> I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. She's just glad to imagine how, how Larry must feel. My life is over! Chill! <laughs> I'm cold too, apparently! Ugh. Is the stupid dick hole not working yet? Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? What's wrong now? Ah, Nick! Don't you worry about me! I'll be dead and gone soon! <laughs> Good! Wait, wait, I, I mean, no! Bad! Bad! Bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Cry, cry, cry. But, but, my Cindy, 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 when he's gone, man, gone forever. Larry, she was a, nah, never mind. Congratulations. Congratulations, Larry, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. In fact, this is the headlines now. Harry, <laughs> Harry Butts. Harry Butts. Yes, like yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> uh, thanks. I really owe you one. I don't forget. I don't forget this ever. Celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the only one who got you off the hook. Hey, that's the one that got you the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A, pre a present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that? Actually, I made this one clock. I made this clock for. Her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You you made this? Well, I'll, well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Believe it? I was owned to that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't make you wanna cry? Wah! Larry. Are you so sure? Ex squeeze me? Yes. Squeeze me, lady. Squeeze me good. I think you thought a lot of of you in her own way. Nah, you don't got to sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing. Really? Isn't that right? Right? Do you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how he felt about him? Huh? Uh, yeah, right. What am I talking about? Let's give answer. Check this out, Larry. Proof of you weren't some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is a clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hopefully that made him feel a little bit better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things can ch change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. <coughs> <coughs> they know when you have a cough. All you can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, 
You have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say how about dinner? On me! But not that way, you pervert! <sighs> what if we could toast? D to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry! You were saying part of why we became a warrior was because of him. Er, uh, yeah. Part at least. You tell me more about you tell me more about it sometimes. Maybe over drinks. Until my first trial came to a close, Larry slapped me on the back and said, "Gene, I could have you. Could have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me unless you count the clock he gave me." A. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon to be a, a center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Da da da. The end. Hi, right, that's the end of the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And join me next time for part two. Episode two. A finish right. Turnabout Sisters. Oh. Hopefully this episode will be up soon. And. Uh, as always. Enjoy the randomness. Cue the end screen.